हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट कंटिन्यू आवर लेक्चर ऑन क्लास फोर एंटी ड्रग्स लेट्स स्टडी अबाउट द ड्रग इंट्रैक्शन ऑफ बीटा ब्लॉकर बीटा ब्लॉकर शुड नॉट बी गिवन विथ वेरा पामेल वेरा पामेल इज एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कैल्सियम चैनल ब्लॉकर So why beta blocker should not be given with verapamil? Let's study about this reason. But before studying about this reason, let's study what happens first in pacemaker cell normally. So in pacemaker cell, that is cell of SA node and cell of AV node, on the surface we have beta one adrenergic receptor, and this beta one adrenergic receptor is serpentine receptor or seven pass receptor. So, when epinephrine or norepinephrine binds with beta one adrenergic receptor, there is stimulation of G stimulatory protein that results in increase in in cyclic AMP that causes increase in protein kinase A. So, phosphorylation of calcium channel occur and that causes increase calcium influx in phase four. So increased calcium influx in phase four causes SA node potential. That causes slope of phase four, and as a result, impulse generation from SA node occurs. Due to increased impulse generation from SA node, heart rate increases, and that is known as positive chronotropy. This is the one consequence of binding of epinephrine or norepinephrine with beta one adrenergic receptor. Now what happens? What is the other consequence? So when epinephrine or norepinephrine binds with beta one adrenergic receptor, there is stimulation of G stimulatory protein. So cyclic AMP increases, protein kinase is A increases, and there is phosphorylation of calcium channel that causes increased calcium influx in phase four. Increased calcium influx in phase four causes increased conduction through AV node. So impulse will pass from atria to ventricle. And this increased conduction is known as positive dromotropy. This is happening normally by the effect of epinephrine or norepinephrine binding with beta one adrenergic receptor. Now, if we give beta blocker, what will happen? Beta blocker will inhibit the binding of epinephrine or norepinephrine with beta one adrenergic receptor. So there will be decrease in G stimulatory protein. Cyclic AMP decreases. Protein kinase A decreases, and there will be decreased phosphorylation of calcium channel. And this decreased phosphorylation of calcium channel decreases calcium influx in phase four. At the same time, verapamil, if given along, will inhibit the calcium channel directly. And this direct inhibition of calcium channel by verapamil decreases the calcium influx in phase four to a larger extent. But now, because of this added effect. One because of beta blocker, and other because of verapamil. Calcium influx in phase four will decrease too much, and this too much decrease in calcium influx in phase four will decrease SA node potential to a larger extent, and that causes slope of phase four to decrease, and impulse generation for SA node will decrease too much. That result in too much decrease of heart rate. That is known as severe bradycardia, and sometimes asystole means heart ceases to beat. Now, too much decrease in calcium influx in phase four also also causes too much decrease of conduction through AV node, and too much decrease in conduction through AV node may result in AV block, atrioventricular block, in which impulse will not pass from atria to ventricle. So beta blocker and verapamil are not given together because it can they can cause severe bradycardia, asystole, and AV block, atrioventricular block. So this is the reason behind behind this drug interaction that beta blocker and verapamil should not be given together.
another drug interaction of calcium channel blocker calcium channel blocker for example verapamil should not be given in case of digitalis toxicity verapamil is a p glycoprotein inhibitor and verapamil decreases the clearance of digitalis so verapamil result in digitalis toxicity verapamil result in increase in digitalis toxicity therefore verapamil should not be given in case of digitalis toxicity Verapamil blocks cardiac calcium channel. So verapamil is more cardio selective. Verapamil has stronger action on heart than vasculosmusal. Diltiazem blocks cardiac cardiac calcium channel as well as vascular calcium channel. So diltiazem is less cardio selective than verapamil, but diltiazem is more cardio selective than dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. So more cardio selective is Verapamil and less cardio selective is diltiazem.
Diltiazem. Diltiazem is similar to Verapamil, except it decreases myocardial conductility to a lesser extent than Verapamil. Adverse effect, contraindication, and drug interaction are the same, except constipation. That means Diltiazem does not cause constipation, and all the other adverse effects, contraindication, and drug interaction are the same as compared to Verapamil. Miscellaneous anti arrhythmic drugs are adenosine, magnesium sulfate, digoxin, and atropine. These drugs are miscellaneous drugs for the treatment of arrhythmia. Example of miscellaneous drug for arrhythmia is adenosine. Adenosine effect is very short lived because it is rapidly uptaken in RBC and in RBC it is metabolized by adenosine deaminase. Therefore, the effect is very short lived that is, adenosine has a very short half life approximately 10 seconds. It is the shortest acting anti arrhythmic drug. Since it has short half-life, it is given as intravenous rapid bolus injection.
Now we'll study the mechanism of action of adrosine. Adrosine binds with adrosine receptor on AV node cell. Now adrosine receptor is G inhibitory. Since adrenosine receptor is G inhibitory, it results in decrease in cyclic AMP and decrease cyclic AMP inhibits L type calcium channel. So, L type calcium channel gets closed that results in decreased calcium influx in phase 4 that causes decreased conduction velocity through AV node. So, AV node gets blocked. That's why adenosine is drug of choice for paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia because it results in AV node blockage. And, and also it is short lived. It has a short half life of, of approximately 10 seconds. And it causes AV node blockage. So adenosine is drug of choice for paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia treatment. Binding of adenosine with adenosine receptor also opens potassium channel. So potassium moves out of the AV node cell. So potassium efflux. Since there is a cation loss, that results in hyperpolarization of AV node cell and AV node cell gets inhibited. So this is the mechanism of action of adenosine. Side effect of adrosine. Side effect of adrosine is bronchoconstrictor. Therefore, it is contraindicated in patient having bronchial asthma with paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. It is also contraindicated in patient having COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, with paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. These are the two contraindications of adrosine. So, in case of bronchial asthma with PSVT and COPD 
with PSVT, drug of choice is intravenous verapamil. Now we will study about drug interactions of adenosine. So theophylline, which is a bronchodilator used in bronchial asthma, theophylline blocks adenosine receptor, so decreases the action of adenosine. Diperenamol inhibits the rapid uptake of adenosine into RBC, is action of adenosine. We have studied that adenosine adenosine is very short lived; it has a very it has a very short half life. Because it is rapidly uptaken in the RBC where it is metabolized, this rapid uptake is inhibited by drug known as diperenamol. So diperenamol, diperenamol increases the action of adenosine. We will study about other miscellaneous drugs for the treatment of arrhythmia in our next lecture.